Hey, happy independence, 15th August 2021. Again in pandemic. Last year it was such, but this time also it is not going to be very different. The fervor, the patriotism and the overall energy enthusiasm that was there, you know, till 2019, it may not be there. But of course, Prime Minister Modi ji will definitely do as he has done the last time. You know, thank the country for grit and resilience that countrymen has shown in the most daunting time of COVID-19, and which has killed so many people in the country, and we are still there, maintain. So, what is going to be very different this 15th August? I always thought that 1947, when India got independence from Britishers, was it the Britishers giving independence or? Indians actually claiming for it and maybe fighting for it as we hear it in history. I don't know. There's a big question, but 1947 did British decide to leave India or were forced to do so? Let's try and understand this on the backdrop of 15th August Independence Day. Let's take one more angle. By the time it's 1945, the British had already won their wars. World War Two, I'm talking about, using Indian soldiers. Yes, a loads of them. Done with the looting and plundering of wealth and resources available in India, demolished the Indian economic backbone, destroyed Indian education system, shipped and locked rich Indian heritage in the British Museum, successfully introduced political divides. in indian community utilizing the muslim league and they have already managed the assassination of netaji mahatma subhash chandra bose yes you have heard it right i have a great letter which i want to read it to all of you now this is a letter which has to do with an original letter which has to do with lord mcclaw and here i go Now the original says I have traveled across the length and breadth of India and I have not seen one person who is a beggar he is talking about lord mcclaw talking about indian scenario who is a beggar who is a thief such wealth i have seen in this country such high moral values people of such caliber and at that i do not think we would ever conquer this country unless we break the very backbone of this nation which is her spiritual and cultural heritage and therefore i propose that we replace her old and ancient education system her culture for if the indians think that all that is foreign and english is good and greater than their own they will lose their self esteem their native culture and they will become what we want them a truly dominated nation this is the letter written on 2nd february 1835 by lord mcclaw to british prime minister what jawaharlal nehru on 26th december 1945 wrote to mr clement atley prime minister of england 10 downing street london i am reading out this for you all dear mr atley i understand from reliable source that subhash chandra bose your war criminal has been allowed to enter russian territory by stalin This is a clear treachery and betrayal of faith by the Russians as Russia has been an ally of the British Americans which she would not have done please take note of it and do what you consider proper and fit this was jawaharlal nehru's letter and then it went on now the basic thing that comes to my mind is this their work in sabotaging India was almost complete. They still waited out another 2 years to stabilize their own economy using cheap labor force and food supply from India pushing India to the brink of starvation. Now, later when it became evidently clear that it's not possible for the British Parliament or the Crown to maintain power in all the commonwealth nations, they devised plans for dividing india in a similar fashion that they had already used against africa 
Hence, the Partition of Indian Act 1947 was passed in the British Parliament. The Indian Independence Act 1947 was directly derived from the Government of India Act 1935. Thus, it only facilitated the transfer of power from the British Parliament to the Indian Parliament, keeping the British Crown as the head of the nation for all the Commonwealth nations. Thus, the British had left India when they wanted, how they wanted, utilizing their terms and conditions without getting forced by the Indian National Congress then founded by Alan Octavian Hume 1885 or Gandhiji. Now is it true that there were astrological reasons for choosing August 15th 1947 as the date for India's independence from the British rule? As gathered from the research, India's independence day symbolized for its people was the beginning of an era that was filled with hope. In 1947, the country embarked on its long march to overcome the colonial legacy of economic underdevelopment, poverty, illiteracy, the wide prevalence of the disease and stark social inequality and injustice. It was Lord Mountbatten who had personally decided the date of August 15 because he had considered that date to be very lucky for his career. During the World War II, it was on August 15, 1945 that is Japan time zone that the Japanese army had surrendered before him. Who I am talking about? Lord Mountbatten was the commander of the Allied forces. Now, Swami Madmanand wrote to Mountbatten saying, For the love of God, do not give India her independence on August 15. If floods, famine and massacres follow, it will be because Free India was born on the day cursed by the stars. It was discovered that on August 15, 1947, India would lie under the zodiac sign of Makara or Capricorn. Further, ominous Saturn highly influenced the day, complicating it further by the dominance of Rahu, which is characterized by fury and aggressiveness. India would be granted independence during the midnight hour between August 14 and August 15. Since, according to the West, a new day begins at midnight, but according to Hindu calendar, it begins at sunrise. For a country so obsessed with the influence of stars and planets upon its daily life, is it any wonder then that back in 1947 what happened so what i'm talking about is india celebrating its independence at the cost of what on reading such articles such inputs which you know draws our attention to think twice what could be the reason that india got independence for and are we enjoying the independence or otherwise taking our independence for granted? I don't know. This is a big question for all of us who are living in this free country for you not know, to really think and think not alone but to act and maybe build our own nation. Because if Lord McLeod that time, McLeod thinks that India was a country cannot be disturbed, was disturbed only through education and that too an influenced education which we are still following. Do not ape any other's culture just blindly. India still has its Indianness that intact, that can be restored, possibly restored with people who are living, who are thinking of ideal India. We can always choose to, to be the ancient India. Maybe with the modern advent of technology, we can still have our culture, our richness, our heritage to whatever amount that we are possessing as of now and can build on from there. It's never an, a dying story. It was never that we have lost everything here. We can only build provided that we 
have some kind of a resurrection done to our education system. Since I am a trainer, I am in, into education industry, I always believe strongly that education can be brought to a level where Indianness can be seen and it can be paramountly seen by the people who are behind this, the teachers, the trainers, the educationists, the institutional heads. I can only plea and make a request to all of you that please make our India the India that the world knows about. Please make India what the world accepts it. Please make India what it was and has been very well exercised in terms of the yogas, the holy books, the mythological books that we have that people follow as their management lesson. If we can bring this back, I think we still stand tall as India, the only country where we are able to fight it with so many different countries just because of its cultural richness, the values, morals, ethics, principles it has practiced. Hindustan ki jai, jai Hind, jai Bharat.